never know when she's going to go into something else. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this is an important day for you and for your soul, for me and for my soul. Today we get to talk about something very, very important, which is your soul and the importance of you living from there. Today I live for my soul. Will you say that with me? Today I live for my soul. In other words, today I don't live for my stories. I don't live from what's happened to me thus far, but today I live from my soul. Let's say it one more time. Today I live from my soul. So what does that mean? Today I live from my soul. It means that as life is happening, you can actually look at your life with joy, anticipation, and even excitement about what's coming because you don't know what's coming rather than fear, dread, and utter, you know, like weirdness. Because how many of us in the last week have done that just even once? Raise your hand. Yeah, I mean, don't we even do it about the bills in the mailbox, even though we already know we spent the money? Have you ever done that? We go with this little plastic card and we buy something, right? And it just seems like it's free because we put the card out there. And then the bill comes and it's actually for exactly the amount that we spent. And we're surprised about that. Come on. We're surprised when that happens, aren't we? How did it get to be that much, we say? Wow, how did, how did that add up like that? Uh-huh, it happens, right? Amen? Amen? Right, well, what if we could look at life from a whole different place, right? That what was happening was actually a good thing. And I don't mean to say, like, looking at life through rose-colored glasses, although that's not a bad thing most of the time, I have to say. But we have to look at what's really going on. And when we know what's really going on, we can work with it rather than avoid it or pretend it's, pretend it's not there, right? So we want to live from our soul, not from our role. And what do I mean by that? Well, what's your role? Somebody tell me one of your roles in life. Teacher? Father? Daughter? Sister? Was that grandma? Oh, yeah, that's a sweet one. Right? Right, yeah. So a lot of us live from our role. Maybe we're a daughter. Maybe we're... Maybe part of our role we've lived from is not being well most of our lives. That's a role that we've chosen and we've lived. Maybe our role has been, dun, 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 I'm going to come in and save everybody. Right? I'm going to be superhero, super mom, super grandma, super minister, super sister, super gossiper. <laughs> I, anything's happening, I'm going to say what I think to everybody who will listen. Well, that's an obvious one, not living from our soul, right? But those roles that we get attached to, sometimes those are hard to, uh, hard to differentiate, right? We don't realize we're not living from our soul often, right? So we want to learn to live from our soul. We want to learn to live from our place of connection with God. So your soul... And not everybody talks about this, so to some people this may be new, which is, new, which is why I want to say it in this way. Your soul is connected both to eternity, right, connected to spirit, and also in the here and now reality, whatever is happening right here, right now. So what we want to learn to do is live in the now moment. If we're living in the now moment, we don't have to talk about other people. We don't have to make up stories about what other people are doing, right? When we're living in the now moment, we deal with what's happening right here, right now. And we learn, if we deal with what's happening right here, right now, that we actually grow past our past. Instead of the past defining who we are all the time, right? Instead of our shame or what used to be and how whatever happened to us. And everybody in here has got many, many stories. I'm not trying to take away any of your story except that it's not who you really are. Right? You learn to live past what's happened to you. Or and even your accomplishments. Right? You learn to live past what the stories are about you and live from your soul. Now, I'll tell you, one of the reasons I picked today's topic was because Eddie Watkins Jr. was coming. He's somebody I have a lot of respect for. The reason is he lives life as if it's not a rehearsal, right? He lives in the moment. As a matter of fact, when I watched rehearsal, I was confused for a moment, and I thought Eddie thought a church was happening right then. <laughs> I said, you know, he's all out 110%. It's 8 o'clock, man. <laughs> he knows I'm playing with him because I love it. That's right. 
Life is happening right now. There's not some life way out here you have to go get. It's already yours. It's right here. This utopia that we dream about, forget it. It's right here, right now. And many of you are making wonderful choices for your life. I want to acknowledge that. I'm not saying you're not. Let's do it more together as a group. Let's lift one another up in doing that, right? Say, yeah, live that purpose. I see you go, baby, go, right? I know, I mean, you go, go. Some of you got to go, right? Eddie's going. Eddie's on the road. Go. Spirit told him to go. He said, all right, I'm going. On the road. Don't know how long. Don't know when I'm going to be back. But that's what I'm going to do because that's what Spirit's guided me to do right now. So part of living from your soul is living in the present moment. And I'm going to tell you something. Depending on what's going on in your life at the time, that can be a very difficult task. And it sounds very, it sounds very simple, right? Just, hey, just live in the moment, man. As a matter of fact, I'm going to buy you a T-shirt that says, it. hey, man, be in the now, dude. You know all those cool spiritual t-shirts? Now we can get, and I love those. I feel so righteous in them. (laughs) In like my cool prayer beads and stuff, you know? But, you know, you can't buy your holiness. It cannot be purchased. We try, though, don't we? I mean, I'm telling you. We think if we could just read enough books, if we could just listen to enough gurus, maybe, if we could just, you know, Somehow, out here, get the life I've always wanted. And Spirit's like quietly saying to you, the life you always wanted is right here. As a matter of fact, it's happening. But you're missing it because you're so out of the moment. You're so stuck in the past or so far off in the future. The miracle that's right now you've missed. There's, I mean, there's miracles sitting in the room. There's a child right there. So beautiful. That's a miracle to look at. You know that? Can you imagine if walking through your home could be sacred? That you wouldn't have to light a candle or some incense or go see a channeler or a psychic or come to church to feel like you've done something holy? Did you know that sorting the wash could be holy? Did you know it? Sure. There's a book I read every now and then and um, it's like... You know, I go places, certain places for inspiration, you know. And this is one I come back to over and over and over. Every time I pick it up, I forget how good it is. And I'm just so sucked into uh, the simplicity of the words. There's one of the poems. I think I've shared one of them here before called Threshold. And it's just about walking across the threshold of a door. You can't believe how spiritual that can be. See, so the thing that we think we have to go out here and get, we're missing in the everyday. So even in the mundane, the holy is there. Why? Because you're there to experience it. We say every Sunday, wherever I am, God is. Right? So no matter what your role in life is, as you're doing that role, guess what? Your soul is wanting to come forward in that activity. So whether you're an accountant or a teacher, or maybe you're retired. Maybe you're at home living on a fixed income. Maybe you're a commissioner. Ooh, bless you. (laughs) Maybe you're sneezing at the very right moment. (laughs) So holy. Right? Maybe you're a nurse or a doctor. Or maybe you're a hairstylist. Or you sweep floors. Or you look after animals. Did you know that could be holy even? A dinner with your family, you could actually talk to one another and not all be on your phones? Although that can be holy too, all being on your phones, having a good time together. That could be holy too, actually. Why? Because you're there in the activity. Wherever I am, God is. Will you say that with me? Wherever I am, God is. Wherever I am, God is. In other words, if I show up, God is in the room, right? If I show up, God is in the room. Now, was God already there? Yes. But it was sure hard to make out without you in the room. But it was sure hard to make out without you here showing some love. How many of us have felt alone at times and then the right friend comes at the right time and suddenly we feel better? That's God showing up for us. I mean, it is. 
It is. So if you start to get tempted to be stuck in the past or way off into the future, reach out for help from a friend maybe. Right? Reach out for help from maybe one of our prayer chaplains or one of our staff members. That's what we're here to do. Just reach out. Get a little help along the way. Right? Just reach out for some love and some support. You can be God with skin on for those people. You know, many years, uh, many years ago, I don't know, several years ago, when I was doing chaplain work in the hospital, I learned so many things. I can't tell you the number of things I learned. And one, um, one thing I learned, I later learned to call it a ministry of presence. And it was when I was very early on in the um, uh, learning, and I was working with a lot of different ministers of different faiths. You know, there were some Nazarenes, there were some Southern Baptists, there were some... Uh, Certainly some Pentecostals. I don't want to leave y'all out, you know. And, yeah. And I uh, worked with an imam, um, Muslim imam, some Catholic nuns and priests, you know, just, just a cross-section of what you think of as religion. And we worked with all different types of people, homeless folks. Uh, and this is in Kansas City. It was in the trauma center. So, you know, if one of the Kansas City chiefs got hurt, well, that's where they came. And at the same time, we'd be working with Vietnam vets that the uh, EMT drivers would rescue, you know, when it was snowing outside, they'd bring them in, we'd warm them up with warm fluids and let them sleep it off and then get it back out. So we really handled a cross-section of society, truly. You, you know, uh, usually in the evenings there were knifings, you know, um, shootings. You know, I've been with people many, many times, young people, 15, 16, 17 years old, just been shot in the chest. You can't believe the things I... Experience. I, I can tell you, uh, ministerial school did not prepare me for one of those things. I mean, not one. And, uh, I mean, God bless Unity's ministerial school, okay? But, and so I was, in, uh, I was in a room, and part of what we had to do for our schooling was we had to, as we had an uh, interaction in, the bed, um, in their hospital room, then the next day when we were in class, we would have to go through every aspect of the conversation what somebody said, what we said, what we did, et cetera. And that's called a verbatim because we were repeating the conversation verbatim. And then your peers would judge everything that you said, all different religions, and they would judge everything you said and say how, wh where are the parts that you detoured them out of their process or whatever. It's a very intense situation. So uh, because, you know, you're wanting to do good and you're wanting to show them, like, you know what you're doing. And, of course, none of us did. None of us. And uh, I had a situation in a room, and when I brought it back to the group, you know, there was nothing on the paper, really, for me. Like, maybe I held their hand. Uh, maybe I went by the room when they needed me. Um, but I never said anything. Nothing. And I remember even at the end of the day, um, when I when I'd been helping these people, because I was on a 24-hour shift. I mean, I don't know why they do this to people. I was so dead on my feet. They do it to doctors, too, though. You guys know. I mean, I just wonder, is this a good idea? These people are cutting on you. Okay. <laughs> I'm just thinking, with me, maybe the prayer doesn't go great, but I can't hurt anybody. Anyway, um, <laughs> you know, woken up at 3 in the morning. Okay, time to go pray. You know, I don't know who thinks these things up. But anyway. So at the end of this, I'd been with this family all night, and, uh, and they kept wanting to take the body out of the room, and I kept saying, no, 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 you know, and I was getting in trouble. I was a new kid, but I didn't care. I was like, these people need their time. But I never said anything to them. Never did I say anything to them. They would just look at me, and I would look at the staff and say, you know, no. And so uh, anyway, at the end of the night, the, the family comes out. It was the mom who came out and just hugged me, hugged me, hugged me, hugged me. And she said, thank you for your support. And then I did the verbatim in front of my class. And they were stunned. And so was I because I thought, they're not saying anything. I guess I did it wrong. I didn't know. And the teacher, who was a Disciples of Christ minister, said, what a great example of the Christ that was. I said, I, I didn't say anything. 
He said, you reminded them God was in the room. That's all. So you reminded them that God was in the room. So that's all of our jobs, right? We don't all wear a chaplain or a minister badge. You know? But we want to know it without the badge on. Right? So that wherever we are, when we show up, when we show up from our souls, that's what people are reminded of. God is in the room. Right? When we live from our soul, we're in that now moment where we don't have to necessarily say anything. Haven't you ever been hugged at a time where you really needed it and they didn't say anything and it was exactly what was needed? It's just because they could be present with you and with your pain. That's all. Right? So today I live for my soul. Will you say that with me? Today I live for my soul. In other words, today I want to live from the now moment. You know, when I read the scriptures, Jesus said it this way. I came that you might have life and have it more what? Mm Mm-hmm. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Not, I came that you might have life and be filled with dogma every day of the week. He didn't say that. I came that you might have life so you can feel guilty every morning that you get up, that down on the cross for your sin. <laughs> no, no, that's not in there either. So we want to be focused on bringing the goodness of God into the world every day. It's such a simple message, right? It's such a simple message. You know, there was a poem I was going to share first service, and I forgot. And then they put up the screen second service, but I kind of want to share it now, can we? All right. It's a poem by Juan Ramon Jimenez called I Am Not I. And I'm going to have to read it with you because I don't think I brought my copy in. I know most of it, but. And it's really, um, the poem is really about many things in my mind, but to me it's a poem about the soul. All right, let's read it together. I am not I. Together. I am not I. I am this one walking beside me whom I do not see, whom at times I manage to visit, and whom at other times I forget, who remains calm and silent when I talk and forgives gently when I hate, who walks where I am not, who will remain standing when I die. That's your soul. That's a deep poem, right? You might say it's about death. Yeah, it is. It's also about life, isn't it? So rather than our soul being over here and us being here, we want to bring those together. We want to live from that place of, of, of gently forgiving. We want to live from that place of love. We want to grow past the past. Right? We don't, our past, what's happened to us, has happened. It cannot be changed. But remember that whatever has happened to you in the past, the worst is over. You've survived it. Now, we don't want to keep living with those wounds running our life. But what I've realized in this last, with this last move that I went through and all this, I keep cleaning out, cleaning out, cleaning out. And it's so interesting because when I looked at those things before moving, I wasn't ready to clean them out. Now, after moving, I am. Something has grown, shifted, changed in me, and now I'm ready to release that old energy. Maybe it's a funky tie to it or there's not, whatever, for whatever reason, it doesn't feel clean and clear to me. So I'm ready to move forward now, finally, with that energy. I'm listening to what my soul is guiding me to do, right? So the piles of boxes that I see, some days they stay because I feel like what I have to do is take care of myself and rest. And other days I'm all about the boxes, right? It's hard to know, but as you, as you, because what looks like your soul work one day is going to be different the next, amen? Some days you may have to say to the laundry, you're going to have to wait there another day. I've got to go spend some time and myself and my personal work and take care of my life. And the other days you say, okay, it's all about the laundry today and this is going to be the most holy task I've ever done in my whole life. Can you imagine how your family would feel when they put the clothes on after all that holy goodness? I mean, when uh, I had to borrow some sleeping bags one time for a, for a retreat, uh, the Bruners had, um, I can't remember what retreat it was now. It might have been a women's retreat. But anyway, they had got these really cool sleeping bags. You know, those ones where you, like, you pull your head in and you're, you know what I mean? You're like this little cocoon. 
And anyway, before I gave it back, I said, well, it's full of blessings. They said, it is? I said, absolutely. I wouldn't borrow something like that without giving you a blessing in return. Right? Even something so simple as that can be a holy act. So remember that the life that you want is not out here anywhere. It's right here. It's already in you. It's in you because God is in you and always has been. Jesus said, it is not I but the Father within right, who does the work. In other words, it's always been there. Acknowledging that as the source of all good, going to that for wisdom and guidance, that's the key to living from the soul. That's the key to living in every, every day in the now moment. Now, you're not going to do this perfectly. I don't do it perfectly. I don't even pretend to do it perfectly. But that's my goal. My goal is to live for my soul. Let's say it together. My goal is to live for my soul. All right, so now we're going to say, today I live for my soul. Together. Today I live for my soul. Right, so I live for my soul, not my role, right? I live for my soul, not my role. Today I live for my soul. It would be a great affirmation to get up in the morning. Today I live for my soul. And God, I'm going to seek your guidance about what's the next step for me in my journey. Maybe it's a healing journey. Maybe it's, right, it's, it's a day where it's self-care day. Maybe it's a day where it's get busy days because I've been avoiding all these other things. I've got, right, some bills. I know I've got to pay. They're sitting there and they're not going to pay themselves, right? So how can I make this a holy endeavor? How can I send love and good energy knowing that as I write every check, I'm all, all I'm doing is sending good energy that way. And it's a service I'm paying for. I've asked for it, right? So I'm going to acknowledge the goodness in it as I give the check away, as I give the money away that's been given to me. See how that can be such a holy moment, right? I mean, I used to dread my bills. You cannot believe how I dreaded my bills, even though I had the money to pay them, right? I just didn't want to give it up. And you know what I realize? Every time I pay a bill, it's God energy going back out that I've already received. You know, once I started making it a holy thing, my gosh, the event got so long. There were candles and incense. And I mean, there's a whole happening around my money situation. <laughs> so fun, though. Can you, I mean, you cannot believe the energy shift around the money. It was unbelievable. My tithe, such a pleasure to write. All the, my bills, such a pleasure to write. Every now and then, if I like it, there was a special thing. I put a little note in. Thank you so much for your service to me. Just something like that. Put God in the middle of all those daily tasks and feel your soul start waking up going, oh, yeah, this is what we're here for. One of the things I love, and this, I just want to share this about Eddie and, and why I picked today, living, um, uh, living Your Soul, is that one of the things he sent me, I think I sent it out to you all in an email, was... Um, I know my purpose, right, is to share this music with the world. And his music is his life experience, right, from career, Motown, session musician, L.A., New York, all that. And then a healing journey of, this, of his soul, right, moving, moving more into aligning with his soul purpose. And so see how the past wasn't wasted at all? But see how Eddie's story is not his past. Eddie's story is his present. His past, just like all of ours, made us who we are today. And every day we have a choice. And how we use that past to move us forward on our journey, to inform our journey, and to begin living more, more, more from our soul. Right? All right. Please join me as we pray. I invite you to take a nice deep breath with me realizing that there's no place else you need to be that you can be totally present to this moment not making up any story about anything or anyone this story is a story of gratitude thank you God I am not who I seem to be I am a soul Thank you, God, that the God presence lives in me and is always urging me forward on my journey. Thank you, God, for my soul's journey. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that every moment I have an opportunity to, to seek you, to know more of the truth by being in this moment to choose the way I'm to go, to choose the direction of my life. Help me remember, God, that God's presence is in me always.
So for each soul in this room, I just say a blessing of peace and abundance. That each person in this room will know their goodness, their godness. And the stories they have about themselves and other people, they'll drop the stories and just move into love. Just move more and more into living from their soul. That's my prayer. So the great regard I have for each soul in the room is just to support you and to inspire you to live more from your truth. But I acknowledge the goodness in you. I acknowledge the God in you. I acknowledge you are a soul. You're not a man or a woman or black or white or Latino or whatever. You are a soul. And you were born this way in this time for your soul to move, for your soul to grow. Today, I live for my soul. So let's just rest in a moment of silence as we know that truth. Today, I live for my soul in silence. Today I live for my soul. Thank you, God, for the courage that it takes every day to get up in the morning and say, I want to live for my soul today. Thank you, God. Show yourself to me. Thank you, God, for the example of Jesus the Christ who showed us the way, who is always on purpose for you, God. Our prayer is to live our purpose in the world, to live it with great zeal, with great enthusiasm, with great joy and anticipation for what life brings. Help us, God, to notice the holy even in the small things, the seemingly mundane things, that the life that we desire is right here, right now, awaiting our noticing of it. So for our time of prayer and celebration today, we are grateful. We are so blessed. Together we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Together, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen.